We're going to make futsa cakes for use in indirect moxibustion. First, you need some futsa powder. This is futsa like you get in the herbal pharmacy, the slices that are generally used in decoctions, and it's been ground up into powder and sifted. So what you need is an equal portion of futsa, oops, and an equal portion of just plain old white flour. You don't have to measure, it doesn't have to be exact. And you don't need a lot if you're just like using one or two slices, um, you know, one or two um, indirect, you know, sites that you need cakes for. So then you stir and mix the flour with the futsa. Now we have to mix it with a liquid. You can mix it with plain water, or the PowerPoint recommends Huangzhou, which is this rice wine that is something like 16% alcohol. It's commonly used in a lot of Chinese medicine things. When it calls for wine, it usually means this. So I'm pouring a little bit into here because it's easier to deal with than in the larger bottle. And um, I like pipettes. Um, they're useful. Sorry, this one's clogged up because I used it for something. Well, okay, not using the pipette. Um, they're useful when you just want small amounts, but I'm going to use the spoon because that one's not working. Sorry. So I'm, you know, mixing together the powder with the liquid. And it's kind of a judgment. You have to decide when it's the right quantity. But if it's too much liquid, you can always add more powder. If it's too much powder, you can always add more liquid. So when you think it's ready, you, you know, pick it up and you start to knead it. With bread, you would knead it on the counter because it's a large quantity. But with something small like this, you're just, you know, working it with your hands. Um, and what you're trying to do is, um, I know some of you are like gluten free when it comes to food, but um, the gluten helps hold the cake together. And before I understood about this, I tried making herbal cakes with just the herbs because the Chinese texts don't always specify, but they would crumble way too easily. And two things happen when they crumble. One is actually the heat can easily move through any cracks and so it gets hotter quicker and they don't get the same therapeutic effect. And the second thing is when you're trying to remove it, um, it can fall apart. And then the burning moxa can fall on the patient, which is not a good thing. So this might be slightly dry. I'm gonna to try to add just a touch more to it. But you know, it's holding together um, and you know, it'll do. So, um, and you could have done this with water, like I said. So when you wanna make the um, herbal cakes, the part that you're not using will dry out pretty quickly. So you can always, you know, cover it if you're not using it all at once. And then, you know, you could roll it into a little ball and then just kind of flatten it to whatever thickness. If you want, make it thicker, then um, there'll be less heat transmitted to the patient. If you make it thinner, more heat will be transmitted. So you have to decide. You can make them larger or smaller depending on how big the cones are. You don't want to forget to poke some holes in it with a toothpick. So... That helps the moxie and the warmth and um, everything go, you know, onto the in, to the point. And then, um, you know, these are moxa futsa on moxa. Sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> moxa on futsa is great on kidney one yong trend to bring down excess like liver yang rising from the head. 
um, or you could use it on Du Four Ming Men or, you know, Ren Four Guan Yuan. In any case, you'd put it on the point. Well, let's switch. Okay. You put it on the point. You can use a little bit of, this is cheesecloth, like you get in a, you know, for, for cooking things. And you can put on the cheesecloth so that if you're worried about picking it up, um, you can lift it pretty easily with the cheesecloth. And that's, you know, a relatively safe way. But if it seems to hold together, like you see, this is holding together just fine. Um, then you don't need the cheesecloth. So then you can take a little bit of moxa make a box of cone, place it on the fuzza, make sure the contact is good between the skin and the fuzza and between the fuzza and the, um, the fuzza cake and the moxa floss. And then you just use it in the usual way. Light it with some incense. And that's basically how you would do fuzza maksa using um, cakes. You can use the same technique with pretty much any other powdered herb. And the convenient thing is, is that as long as you've ground the powder in advance, it just takes you a minute to make the fuzza cake. So the patient could walk in and you've never seen them before and you don't know what they're coming for. And then you decide they need some indirect maksa with herbal um, cakes. You can just make it up on the spot, it, you know, if you're not talking and if you're paying attention to what you're doing, it'll take you, you know, a minute, a minute and a half to make it up. And this is a really nice way to do moxa. And then, you know, if the patient says when they stay hot, you can lift this up and put it in the ashtray or, um, you know, yeah. So that's the story.